Hi there, my name is Will, and I'm going to show you how to use output in Kestra. Now, previously we talked about how to use inputs and how we can use this to make our flows more dynamic, but now I'm going to show you how you can make them even more powerful with outputs. Now, if we run this example again, uh, we're going to get our log that tells us that this HTTP request is successful. Now, we can click on the outputs tab here at the top, which will show us all of the outputs related to our API task, but we can filter this if there are multiple tasks. And we can scroll down and see all of the different things you get from a HTTP response, but the key thing we're looking for here is the body. And so as we can see here, we can access this and then use this in later tasks. So instead of reading it in here, let's say we wanna output this as a log task. We can do that very simply by uh, using an example just like this, and we can use the um, expression here, outputs dot the name of our task, which is API, dot the name of the output, which we can use that outputs tab to figure out. And uh, when I click save and click execute, we will be able to see in the logs here, a uh, response that shows us all of that. Now, th in this example, that's, you know, bit hard to see. It's all a bit, you know, it's not formatted very nicely. So what we can actually do is we can go to outputs and we can use our wonderful friend render expression. Uh, I'm going to click on API. And then here, instead of using that log, we can put the same thing into the uh, render expression box. And when I click render expression, you'll see that I'm actually going to get the same response, but in a much more usable format. So if you're just trying to debug or figure out what's going on uh, without having to put log tasks in, you can think of this as more like a debugger. Um, this is really helpful for being able to figure that out as well. Now, with that in mind, let's make a slightly more complex task. So uh, in the example I'm going to use here, we're going to uh, do the same request, but instead we're now going to hand over our output over to a Python script, which is going to generate us a CSV file. So let's run this and let's see what happens. So as this is running, as you can see, it moves onto the Python task. It hands the output over. We can actually see the logs in real time here. And then once it finishes, we'll be able to go to that outputs tab. And if we click Python, we'll actually be able to see that file exactly as we would expect. So we can generate files and then access them directly in Kestra, uh, which is super convenient and easy to do. Now there's one last thing we can do, which is pass the data even further. And uh, so what we can do is have an SQL query here, make that data a little bit easier to use. So what I'm gonna do is just paste that in like so. We can then just save that as so. And then when we run this, what we can do here is it's gonna run the API request. It's gonna start processing the data in Python. And then we can make an SQL query to get this some certain parts of the data. Um, so we can see here from the logs, the Python runs as expected. It gets all the data. And then here, the SQL query, we can see that in the output. So if I go over to SQL query, I can click preview. And I can see here that it's got us uh, all of the data in a really nice format. So it's super, super powerful. I didn't need to go and take this into a different platform. I could do it all directly in Kestra. So really, really powerful outputs. But next, I'm going to show you triggers in the next episode uh, so we can automate all of this and make this run automatically.